Well, it's the day after Pancake Day. I ate quite a lot of pancakes yesterday, so I'm a little... still feel like I'm kind of digesting my way through that mound of flour, eggs and milk and lemon and sugar. Obviously, I'm a complete sucker for lemon and sugar on pancakes. It's just one of the things. I did have savoury pancakes, just saying. We did have um, chicken. It was like a chicken... It was. I mean, that was more like a sort of like chicken yoghurt chutney. It was kind of like a a curry on a pancake. And then we had bacon, apple and maple syrup, which is always nice. Quite a fan of maple syrup. Go? Never been to Canada, but if I did, I think I'd come back trying to smuggle as much maple syrup as I could. I can't get enough of that stuff. And it's perfect for kind of mopping up with leftover pancake bits. You know, that, that puddle of maple syrup that inevitably exists. Anyway, yes, enough about how amazing pancakes are, and they are amazing, and I'm kind of sad that, um, at least over here, you have Pancake Day, which is uh, the day before Lent, I think, is it the day before Lent, or the day before, the, what, the day before Lent, where basically people had to use up all of their stuff before the sort of eating, fasting restrictions. Lent. And that's why you have Pancake Day. That's why you eat a lot of pancakes on Shrub Tuesday. Of course, I don't think many people that I, I know personally actually, you know, fast at all during Lent. But it's an excuse to eat pancakes. And really, do you need an excuse to eat pancakes? I don't think you should. Anyway, so this is a game in the M2. Already things are going a bit odd. We've got a lot of car, a lot of cars. We have got some Darty cars. There are a lot of vehicles in this game that have got the same sort of gun that I'm using here on the M2, which is a kind of spray and pray gun where you're you're throwing small shells in the general direction of the enemy and hoping for the best. It's one of those tanks where you're, and one of those guns where you you kind of want to get up close. And all of those little penetrating hits start adding up. You take out the components. And with the death of the chap in front of me, I realise that now it's my turn to receive the brunt of the damage, including shots I notice there from behind. And it always kind of confused me, and I and I feel it the same again watching this replay. Why so many people? insist on standing way, way at the back in a tier 2 game when you're armed with guns that really have, that probably have an effective, have such a short effective range that there's no point standing that far back. By the time, it doesn't matter if your crosshairs completely zoomed in, by the time that shell gets anywhere near them, it's probably It's a bad idea. Whereas up close and personal, these tanks are amazing. Absolutely. I think it's interesting because I'm, I've started playing the M2 because I want to try out the new British tank line. And I know it's not that new, but for me, it's still like, oh, look at this new British tank line. Oh, obviously, I've been reading a lot about my march, operation fertilizer, and that stuff. So I'm kind of. I want a bit of a, I want to see what the Firefly is like. Think of it is. And this Enemy is where I play, obviously. I'm, we fixed the track. I'm in a lot of trouble. And I get destroyed by premium little white tank behind me. But fortunately, some of the other people on the team have realised that this is this is now the time to start to start maybe considering moving up. There are there there aren't that many of them. The ones that are there are damaged. There's an SPG, not really many people to protect it. Now's the time to go. And one of the things that I find difficult in World of Tanks is matches are quite short and with fifteen people on the side it's difficult to know what the people you're playing with are going to be like. 
Are you going to get a team of very cautious people? Are you going to get a team of really aggressive people? It's difficult to kind of know what role in a team you're supposed to play. And I know that a lot of that is going to be determined by the tank you've chosen and what the other tanks on the game are like and what the map is like. I've seen so many games where the top tier heavy sits really far back and you think well we need you on the front you've got all this armor we, we need you to take hits and draw their attention so our medium tanks can get behind them and but it doesn't happen people are very very cautious in this game sometimes and I can understand why because obviously you want credits you want you you want a good number of kills to your name you want the high damage and you don't want to have to you know, pay for the repairs on the tank so much. But still I think it would be nice if there was some way of saying of easily discerning whether or not your team is made up of aggressive people or defensive people. So there you go, the M2. Um, I was actually going to talk a bit about going to say historical stuff regarding the development of British tanks but I think I need to sit down and read a bit more about that before I'm really ready to, to have an opinion so that's it for now I hope you enjoyed Pancake Day because I mean in fact why wait why wait till Pancake Day to have pancakes have have pancakes every every month have pancakes every week have them for breakfast every day, for goodness sake. Just just go and eat more pancakes. This video brought to you by the British Pancake Association.